Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the European Masters. First of all, I have to put my hands up and say I'm a moron and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I got a lot wrong in the post game, and I'm just going to quickly correct where we are in the standings. There is still a chance for both Matchco, Mouse, and Illuminar to make it out of this group. Nobody is locked in. And if Matchco win here, we have a three way tiebreaker. The way that tiebreaker works is based on average game time. So the team with the lowest average game time is the plays the winner of the other two teams who have to match up first so at the moment mouse have the uh, lowest average game time so if matchco win in over 20 uh, 32 minutes and 12 seconds it will be illuminar versus matchco and then they, the winner of that will take on mouse and if uh if sorry if matchco win in 32 minutes and 11 seconds or under then at that point they will be that second team that gets played so there's still a lot up in the air a lot of stakes right now i'm an idiot because apparently i don't read numbers right and i'm going to pass it over to Gulborg to break down the stakes of what the hell's going on <laughs> <laughs> perfect thank you so i think this is still a very important moment despite that much can obviously force an insane night where we'll be having yeah two more games after this one potentially for illumina this is everything for them um, if they take this home, they are out of the groups and they are going to quarters as Paul is our Ultra Leaguers last home as the two last hope as the two other teams have been eliminated so far. And you know, I think they still have a pretty good shot at doing so. I think that they are set up for success here. Out of the other teams we've seen so far, Illumina has showed some really nice play around, specifically their jungler. I think if you get the hands uh, him on Udia or Hecarim, one of these meta junglers, he'll absolutely take over the pressure in the early game. So it's going to be interesting to see if Muchko is going to take the same approach as we just saw them do, where they just banned out the two strongest junglers which was the Hecarim, which was the Udia. And this time around, they've learned from their lesson and they're also making sure that the Jinx is hitting that ban table. Alrighty, well, final ban coming in from Illuminar. What are they going to to take away? The Hecarim is still open, although I feel like if you're Illuminar, it's probably okay just to leave that open and try and first pick it. So looking at other things, the Fresh is open as well, if you want to take that away. Uh, it's going to be the Kaiser. And I feel now over to Masco, it's kind of like, what do they what do they fear more? The Fresh or the Hecarim? And it's actually the Tristana. So it's going to be a bit of a trade-off on that one. Curious to see where Illuminar lead, whether or not they go for the Hecarim or the Fresh. Realistically, I kind of expect it to be this Hecarim. It's kind of been the, the champion that is first pickable the most at the moment. Well, so, we haven't actually seen Papa Tabachi play Hecarim in the tournament yet, true. but there yeah, we it go. Is. It is the no-brainer. Like, and, and, and to be fair... It's not the hardest champion to pilot either, especially not when you go for that chem tank build. But now it's onto the side of Machko. What are some of these champions that you'll be going for? Last ban, we saw them have huge priority onto the virus, and there is a lot of AD carries that's already been banned. We see the Tristana, we see the Jinx, we see the Kaiser. Personally, I think one of these self-healing AD carries are absolutely amazing into Hecarim, so the likes of Sire is really good, but they're actually deciding to go for a bit of a more spicy one with the Senna down there. We've seen it be picked up with Cyan from the, the other Italian team. We've seen it be picked up with the Tam Kench, just to create a, like a really safe bot lane. There's a lot of opportunities there. And then there is the Orianna available as well, if you want to secure STM mid laner right now for Sepik as well. And I feel like they don't really need to lean towards that support right now because things like the Scion or the uh, the Tank Edge, not quite as blind pickable on the side of um, Illumina. I mean, I guess the Scion is somewhat. The Volibear is going to get picked out as his answer to the Hecarim for Papadabachi. Now Illumina are looking to try and round out with maybe a bot lane for themselves. They're going to take the Varus for Odie. We did just see a Varus in the last game, but what I really like about the Varus is its flexibility in the build path. You can go for the on hit, you can go for the lethality, kind of base it on one of the team compass drafted and figure out what you want to go for. And they're just going to take themselves the Tarn Kench. So I actually think this is very smart. When you round up the Varus with the Tarn Kench, it does mean you can go this on hit Varus and just keep the Tarn Kench there to peel for him. And Sebex maybe leaning back to something we saw him have. Pretty mixed success on in that last game. Had a rough start to the game on the Annie, but later found a few oil shots and a few openings. But the game kind of had snowballed away from them. So I think if you're going to pick this Annie, I want to see match could be a lot more decisive, a lot more proactive on the map with it. Yeah, and this time around with the Senna, you already know that you can have a slightly weaker, uh, or you can play towards the bot lane as a weak side bot lane if you want to. So that means you can invest more resources onto Stenbos. So you can save that counter pick for him, and you can make sure you have another lane to just 
utilize all your pressure through. Last time around, that was very hard for them. You saw how they struggled walking back and forth between multiple lanes, not really knowing where to go. But there is still a lot of bands to come out here. And now from the mid lane, Orianna has been targeted away from Chayuk. It's been his most played champion so far of the tournament. Victor is still up there. Syndra is a champion you can get rid of as well. Um, but I do expect him to go for that Victor. It seemed like it cost him some troubles before. It's actually going to be the Twisted Fade to deny them some side lane pressure. So still leaving some control mages up for the side of Chayag. And now, what is the last band going to be? Is it going to be a support counter pick? Or are you just going to trim out one last carry from Stainbuzz? We saw he liked to play the Jace. We know he liked to play the Renekton and the Nasta set as well. So there's still a lot of options to try and take away. But at the same time, yeah, you can remove one. There's still three others that's going to be quite problematic. So they are just going for the supports instead here. Yeah, it's heavily focused on those ones out. Technically, the Karma's flexible as well, and it's going to be the Lux lock-in here. I'll be going on to Darkrai <coughs> in the uh, bot lane. So I'll be farming Lux with the Senna as a, a quote-unquote support slash fasting Senna. Um, Jamada feels very, very heavily about it not being called, uh, just being called support Senna, but, you know. Uh, over to the side of Illuminar. <laughs> now looking for a top laner and a mid laner. They know that they're playing into this Annie. They did see something like a Victor handle it fairly well. They're going to pick themselves up the Gnar for Melanic. And I'm really liking what Illuminar have put together here. It's a very decisive team comp. They've got a bit of engage. They've got a bit of peel. They've got a bit of non-committal engage from the uh, Varasar. Looking to try and round it out with a little bit more damage as the Akali gets locked in. So we'll have a bit of a rougher laning phase versus Sevex on this Annie. But later we'll just be able to kind of pop the likes of uh, Durking and Darkrai on this Lux Center. But at the same time, right, like, yes, you have the Twilight Trout to kind of disengage with Asakali, but Annie doesn't care about that. The W still hits you, the ultimate still hits you. So if you know where they are, it's going to be quite easy. Now, we have the full composition rounded out from Muchko right now. So they're actually not going for a carry top laner at all. They're just going for the classic Nara into Cyan matchup. So you have two beefy frontliners. You have your backline damage from the locks, from the center, and then the Annie for the burst potential to come out there. On the other hand, Two very standard uh, top side of the map. You got the Gnar, who's ready to just dive in. You got the Hecarim as well, who's going to be quite pivotal when you have squishy backlines like the center, like the locks. And then you have the Akali as well. So you can already tell most of the team composition from Illumina, they just want to dive in there. They want to be able to move past your front line and one-shot your back line. And that's where Varus comes into the picture. It seems like with this team composition, you could be looking towards that poke comp to try to help your carries come in and one-shot someone if they poke down a little bit. Because it can be kind of tough for this team composition to get rid of the front lines you have on the side of Muchko. Okay, so uh, I mean I, I'm, I'm really liking what Lumina I've got. They've got a very kind of, you know, a bit more standard team, but Muchko, there is there is a lot of, there are tools for them to play around, and I think it's going to be down to Chayak to find some creative flanks on this Akali, blow up the back line before they're able to really take over the fight, because Sebex is, on, on Annie, Annie does one thing. It's Tibbers down, a lot of burst, and then run away, because you're out, everything's on cooldown. And then after that, it's kind of, you got you got a Lux and a Senna to kind of provide that damage. And it's going to be hard to deal with that if you're playing just kind of face-to-face, -face when you've got a Volley Bear and a Scion being this meat shield in front of the carries. But Chayek... And Papa the Butcher can somewhat bypass that with flanks and, you know, using a lot of their movement. And and, and once again, Jake, I, I feel like I have to reiterate the stakes for this game. If Mochko wins this game, we end out in a three-way tie, which will be played after this game. If Illumino secures this game in the back, they are through two quarters and they are the only Ultra League team to actually make it out. So there's a lot of the line here for both teams. This matchup is all or nothing, quite frankly. And it's Illuminar's last hope. And not Illuminar, <laughs> just Illuminar. It's, I mean, it's obviously their last hope, but it is. it's also the Ultra League's last hope. Poland have already lost two teams from their league. One of which being a Go Roku are the defending champions of the European Masters. Exactly. Obviously, it's a different roster, but it's still the same organization. Kick, a team and an organization that has played in a lot of European Masters and very storied over here as well. And it'd be devastating for them to lose to the PG Nats here and then have to play through tiebreakers. And if they lose those tiebreakers, that's it. That is Poland out of the European Masters. All they have to do is find the win. They've cut, drafted themselves and they crafted themselves a fantastic team comp. It's just a matter of the execution, making sure they get it right. Matchco, 
looking to keep the PG Nats hopes alive as they've already got one team in. It'd be a massive win for the Italians to find a second team out of the group stage. Especially for a region like that, where last time Italy got a team out of groups was in 2018. It's been three years, which is absolutely crazy to think about. And now they already have one out, but having two out, that would be absolutely monumental for the league. And now we have entered the laning phase here. You see the double range bot lane here. You're never going to have priority when you have a time catch. He's there to keep the AD carry safe. He's not there to gain you any sort of priority. But priority for Illumina Gaming, you will have that on the top side with the Nah matchup into the, the Hecarim. Oh, not the Hecarim, but the Cyan. And that's why you can also see the junglers pathing like they are right now. It's going to make sense for Seaboy to path towards this bot lane where he's going to have priority. He can pick up the Scuttle then. And it's going to make sense for Papa Tabachi to path towards the top side where he's going to be able to take care of that top side Scuttle as well. So both junglers just kind of handshaking their routes here. Like oh, having a pretty rough start to the lane phase. You kind of expect that on the... Uh... New Akali with less health and higher cost on the energy versus the Annie, who will just be able to shove in the lane and constantly trade with that Electrocute and the stuns. And this time around, you know, Annie had a rough time in the laning phase into the Victor, was continuously pushed under turret, but this time around can actually excel the fact that she is a range into melee. She is going to be giving priority for the junglers here, something they lacked in the mid lane in the game they just lost. So, Seaboy, once again, we saw him here last time as well, taking two camps at once and then going straight into the Scottos afterwards. Perhaps into influencing a lane, or maybe just to take a recall and get out of the map as quick as you can. Because there are maps that are placed to influence here from the side of Mochko, but theoretically speaking, they shouldn't really be looking for anything before they hit six. But once you do hit six, there's a lot of tower dive potential, both in the top side, but especially in the mid. That Twilight Shroud, yes, you can hide yourself, but Tippers, the W, it's still going to find you, and Volibear is going to be able to disable that turret. So I think that's kind of what we're looking for if you are Mochka. So both the junglers resetting the exact same time, so they're just looking to get back onto that map. Bot lane is... Doing okay, to be fair, for OD. If you do look at the farm difference between Darkrai and him, pretty close. So, OD kind of okay considering, but they did expect to get heavily shoved in. And now for one tip, uh, Biscuit delivery to keep himself sustained in the lane as well. I want to get to you here. For once, you're actually a Lux connoisseur. You're that kind of guy that'll be playing in mid, aren't you? I'm a, I'm a Lux mid connoisseur, not really support. The, the kind of guy I dodge in my champ selects. That's yeah. <laughs> So, so tell me when you said this, about what, what's the when... power spikes for this monstrosity? What are we looking at there for once? Oh, God. I mean, you're asking me about a bot lane, Lux. Um, okay, in the mid lane then. Tell me about it. I mean, the mid lane, uh, I haven't actually played it for a while in mid, actually. Uh, but it used to be, once you got the Ludens, you can kind of keep the lane shove up. Just because you have the splash damage from your E, which I assume Darkrai is maxing. Unless he's going really supportive and like maxing the Q for the stun duration or the snare duration. Uh, we'll have to have a look at that when we go back to him. But if you if you are maxing E and you go Ludens, you do kind of just constantly keep the lane shove up. I think that that that's kind of what we're going to be looking at here as well in the bot lane. Like you are looking to gain priority when you when you have a double ranged bot side down there. And I think when we look towards the first objective as well, which is obviously going to be the Drake. I think it's going to be too early in the game for Illumina really to have their power spikes there and feel confident. So it wouldn't surprise me if Seaboy, when the Drake is spawned, that he'll just be able to solo it up. And it, yep, <laughs> well, there we go. Mid lane, even for them right now. Bot lane's pushed in, and there should just be nothing stopping them right here. So for Illumina, this is the Ultra Leaker style that we've been talking about throughout European Masters. It's finding that power spike in the mid game when you get the first or the two item power spike coming in there, and then you're looking for the fight. But for Mochko, you just want to utilize as much as this free early game as you can get. Every lead you can get, you take that. So it'd be lovely to see that after Seaboy's full clear has come out, we start seeing him take some priority around the Rift Hell when it starts spawning. When the second buffs starts to come around the map as well, like the blue buffs, you try to get in there and steal as many leads as you can away from the side of Illumina. Melanick going to trade ultimates for Sten there, just to disengage him. And yes, Muchko are able to pick up this first dragon for themselves. They've got priority in the bot lane, which is honestly going to be something that's going to happen for a very long time. Look, Papadabachi will be spotted out by this ward. 
Seavoy's in the area as well. And Seavoy is level 6, so the dive potential is very real. If Darkrai is able to hit a binding, it's even harder to deal with him. Once that level 6 comes through and you've got that final spark to pair up with that as well. It does hurt, as you can see. It's the E-Max coming in from Darkrai, so... Only taking a lot of poke, and they can just continually keep the wave shove up. I'm but curious to see what Darkrai actually builds here. Look at this, though. Whether or not like, he goes for, like, a Moonstone build, or if he does go for the full AP build. Four people just recalled at the same time, Jake, from the map, map of Machko right now. And when four people recall like that, you know a lane swap is about to come down here. You see this really coordinated by the side of Machko. And question is, is Illumina Gaming actually going to be reading into this lane swap, or are they going to be looking to put the support off for Herald and just get solo re resources for Odie? And right now, it could be looking like they're going for that sort of play, but you should still have the man advantage for Muchko and hopefully be able to pick up this Rift Herald with that man advantage. So I like the ideas we're seeing come out from the Italians here. They want to be able to make as much out of this early game as they can, which we said is going to be a win condition for them because it will be scary when they start hitting their items on the Illumina side. Yeah, they've got, and this is kind of the, when you have a support center or like a fasting center, sorry, you don't have to really worry about keeping them in a lane to kind of solo farm. It just looks like Illumina are okay giving this up. They're going to try and answer with a couple of plates in the bot lane and that is where they'll be happy. They just want to try and get as much solo gold or as much kind of free gold onto OD as possible. He is going for the on hit build, judging by the items in his inventory. When you have a Tarn Kench, it does mean that you can do that. Typically, if you want to play at range, you obviously go for the Lethality build. But when you've got a Tarn Kench, you can go for the on-hit build and then use Tarn Kench as a tool to peel you from getting into ranges. It does look they are now rotating members over. Melanic will spot Seaboy out. Let's take out this Pink Ward as well while he's at it. Rift Herald taking a fair amount of damage, but it may just get a reset off. And Melanic about to gnar out means this is actually a little bit scary, so... Let's go, okay, giving this out. The final spot is going to connect, and Chipsky eats him up just before it goes pop. So Melanic going to be a okay to live this one. And now it's over to Illuminar, who is starting up this Rift Held. And let's go, not really able to answer out. Sten is staying in the bottom side of the map. Does have teleport available. And there is a ward for him to teleport to if it's behind Illuminar. But for now, it looks like they're okay just to give this up. This is going to be a free Rift Herald. Melanic just comes to catch this wave. It is going to be a free Rift Hell, and normally a play like that would have been okay if it was the AD carry losing resources, but this is your sign you're getting ahead. This is the sign that got all those solar resources, got those plates for himself, and while that is nice, it's not going to worry you as much as it, as is, it was one of the carries from the side of Mochko, that's what I picked those up. So now with Papatabachi and this Herald in place, he can start... Uh, injecting some of this extra gold into one of his carries. Realistically speaking, they're probably not going to be able to take down a turret unless they collapse on someone and dive them four man. Um, they're probably just going to be looking to get some platings onto one of their carries and just feel like that's that's enough. That's a decent trade going into the mid game. So Melanic just going to get himself a light bit of damage off into Sten. If you have a look at the inventories right now on Illuminar, they have got a lot of those Merc Treads recognizing. First of all, there's a lot of AP with the Annie and the Lux mix, but also a lot of CC on that team, and they want a bit of a tenacity to work with. And like Over on the side. Well. Oh, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, there's one minute to this strike spawns again, Jake. And yeah, you can and see. Already, Muchko are looking to try and set up some vision. It's very limited, but the swap has come out, and I wonder if Illuminar just give this up in, in favor of trying to get some towers. I think this is completely fine. The fact you only give them two is. It, you honestly don't mind that, because realistically speaking, you only want to fight them when you feel confident that those two items, so you're always going to give this Drake up for free anyway. So the fact that you can just get a free turret up here, essentially with Mochko only getting a Drake, no dives onto the side of the Nar right here, that's absolutely perfect for you, because they're going to be wasting a lot of time trying to clear out the Drake. It's not going to be wasted, but you get the sense that I mean that they will be using time on that. And while they do that, the recalls can come through from the side of Illumina and they can start backing up Melonic so he doesn't have to worry about getting doved while the rest of his team is up on the top side. So you can already see now on the minimap, Chipsy is making his way down there. He does have that Voyage ready should a dive come through. So this is just Melonic feeling confident enough to stay on the turret and farm it up. Really nicely done here by Illumina, making a good situation out of the priority for Mochko in the early game actually.
Yeah, very smart player. Semex has got the tippers available, uses the stun, and now that means Papadabashi's going to jump in the... Perfect executions for him down as the Railgun Shield is going to be there as Chayek slides in in his first blood to Papadabachi. Big T's going to chase him down, but he's not going to be able to find it. And what a stellar play coming out there from Chayek. Really nice utilization of the cancellation of the perfect execution into the flip and, uh, Shuriken flip. Really nicely done there, not even taking any damage. Oh, well, he is taking damage, but not as crucially as he could have done there. So not only did they get all the gold injected into the Vorus, they're also able to prevent the dive from the bot side and they're able to get a kill in the mid lane in the span of two minutes. Really nicely done from Illumina. And you can see they're only up one kill, but that's 3k, you know, 2k for them that they are in a gold lead now as well. One thing also to note is neither Darkrai or Durking have a cleanse. So with the Chains of Corruption, it is... It's not really too risky for Odie to throw it out, or he's not going to worry about trading it for a cleanse and Good point. wasting his ultimate. He can find that lockdown. As a uh, Seed Boy looking to potentially set up for a dive, although Papadabachi is in the area. The wave's going to start to crash, and multiple members are coming in. Chipsky looking to try and gobble up his AD carry out of danger. Can't quite get in range because they do find the knockup. The chains come in, and that's going to be the flash out from Odie to try and get away from the moment. The tower gets turned off. Odie very low. The final spark will clip him. He's low. No! Send flashes and also oh. a minion. Uses a decimating smash. The shuriken flip lands by Chayek. But he is not going to follow up onto this one. It's a two for none in favor of Muchko. Meanwhile, the teleport's getting used going back up to the top lane to deal with Melanick. I was worried there for a second when he started auto-attacking the minion instead. But he does have the decimating smash to pick up the last kill there. Odie just barely is getting, getting out with the, minute, the skin of his teeth and then getting picked down just when you thought that. He was available to get out there, and here we kind of see it again. This is just beautiful dive set up here. They know they don't have to worry about the top side turret is gone, so there's still going to be someone to pick it up. And they just decide to go on the time. Kenshin said, yeah, there's a Varus there, but if we go for him, he's just going to be gobbled up. See by disabling the tower afterwards, so no one oh. will have to die. And there, the flash order attack on a minion, and they're living up. See by though. Z-Boy's in a whole lot of trouble. He's able to survive just about. Sebex has the stun charged up, but he's not going to throw it down. And Melonic able to get out with Papadabachi. The old T Dog. And a ping back to safety towards Sevex. Just doing a little bit of poke into the Illuminar boys. I think you've had three different names for that big Tibbers right there so far. Big T Dog, Big T. Tibber Rooney. Uh, maybe, maybe not that last one, but it is still Chad Illuminar. Uh, do, do we talk about the game or do you have another name? Uh, I want to have another name. I want to interrupt you again, but I don't. Uh, Seaboy's been found by uh, Pabadabachi, who is just going to look to charge him back out of his Sky Splitter. The shield is going to proc, and Gypsy's coming in. A lot of healing coming in from the Railgun as well. Papadabachi has to trade his ultimate to try and survive this one. Chipsky can gobble him up if he needs to get it. Gypsy eats up his jungle. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back into the right on the final spark! No! Papadabachi survives with a sliver of health. Let's go. Oh, making members over. Odi has that chain of corruption and he's going to have to throw out the pit, the um, arrows for the Slayer. And that is Darkrai with a flash with the binding light. And uh, I think that catfish is just going to take a fun little trampoline before losing his life to Durkin. And all of a sudden, this is also Muchko being way more cohesive as a unit here. They're actually playing together like last game. We barely saw them as five together. You saw them four, sometimes moving up and down from river trying to get something out of nothing. But this time around, it's actually a responsive play we see coming in from them. Papatabachi here being way too overextended. And this is why you never take extended traits with the Volley Bear. As soon as the first W comes down, when he hits you with the second, that's where he starts to do a lot of damage. Take a look up to Papatabachi now. He knows he cannot take another one. And as soon as he's caught in this situation, not much to do about it. I think you just jump ship here. Whew! I'm not sure why Chipsy... I, did, like, I don't, I don't tower. think Chipsy did that. Remember, if you're in Tom Kench mouth and you right click oh, yeah, you yourself, can click. you yeah. can click yourself out. And I think that's what happened there. He was just like, all right, I just need to get out. Almost dying to the minions as well. And then, yeah, I mean, Catfish is just on the menu as you set yourself. I feel like that'd be a really fatty fish. Catfish. Why? Just because he's fat? No, no, it's like a large fish, so I feel like it'd be quite a fatty fish. Maybe. Maybe, but despite Teleports that, are coming in, though. Oh, Melanix about to time out Meganar. This is actually really poor timing, as this is the third dragon 
board the side of Mashko. They're just going to charge in. Chaik, the one who's caught out all of the CC, and Chitsky's blown up. The final spark has been used. Tip has been fired, and Chaik able to buy himself a little bit of space, able to survive. No teleports. He can't rejoin this as Melonic started up the dragon, kind of just giving a bit of a leash over. It's going to be very, very rough here. And they don't have their support. Melonic being zoned away. Piercing Arrow is going to come over the wall. It's only going to do a little bit of damage to this dragon. And that is now one off the soul for the side of Mashke. That is just straight up soul point for them right then. We talked about Illumina. We know they want to come online in the mid game, but you don't have a choice now for the next five. In five minutes, you'll have to fight for that, Drake. Or you'll give over that soul to a Lux, to a center with that long range, to the extra burst damage you get out from the Annie. And you can absolutely not let that happen. And you can take a look onto the bills now. Varus has come through with an unhit Varus, actually. But I'm taking a look onto the mid lane right now, where Akali has finished up a Riftmaker, which is more for these extended trades rather than going in there and one-shotting them with the Night Harvester. So, Illumina don't have a lot of time to finish those second items. Next time around, they'll have to play around their priority. They'll have to do a better setup, setup for the Drakes, and they'll probably have to fight, not only for the Drake, but possibly also for their your master's hopes remember much are actually on a good pace right now they just need to beat 30 to 11 and it slims down the amount of games they need to play in a tiebreaker by one so really really important for them to keep the, te the tempo up here otherwise they have to work through illuminar once again and then through mouse that's the thing if you just joined the stream now if you don't know what's going on here if illumina gamings wins this game they are on to quarters but if Mochko wins this game, they force a three-game tiebreaker between Mochko, Illumina Gaming, and Mouse. So there's a lot on the line in this last game of the day, potentially last game of the day, as we may end out in those set tiebreakers. Yeah, that's actually one thing we didn't mention. After this game, if the tiebreakers happen, there'll be another two set of games, and they'll be happening on stream. Me and Gulborg will guide you through those, so it's going to be a very long day. And a very exciting day. So we could see all of the... Ultra League of representatives knocked out in three days in a row here at the European Masters. Not a start for a very storied region, for a region that has been incredibly hyped up for the last few EU Masters. But for now, they are keeping their hopes alive. They are still up in gold. Sure, they're down in dragons, but they are up in gold. And they are going to pick themselves up their second Rift Herald. What will they do with this Rift Herald? Right now, the state of them is Melodic. rotten really in their favor. Instantly gets exhausted, the gobble comes out, Chipsy gets stuck with a big old teddy bear in his charge. The charge is coming down, three members feared up at the moment. That's me, Chai coming in, trying onto the back line, looking for the knock-up, the railgun's gonna pop, the AD carry is dead, the support is dead, Chai has to ping out, and that's going to take it out free like that! What is happening here? Illumina, you opted in for that fight as well. You had the tools. Odie, he died with Flash and Cleanse. Chipsy died with Flash and Exhaust. Melonic died with Flash. You opted in for a fight. You were not prepared to fight, apparently. And Mochko, first to have taken the mid and second tier as well. Baron is spawning in 10 seconds. I don't think they'll be going on to that, but if you make one more mistake like that again, it's absolutely horrible. Now, fight is great from the beginning. You force out flashes, you get out. But now, remember, the Tamkench Gobble is on cooldown, and pay attention to Stain Boss in the background. Take a look onto Odie, has flash, doesn't use it, gets annihilated there. That's a tank taking care of an AD carry in 2021. And after that, there's nothing to play for you there. It's just Illumina Gaming not being ready for the own fight they just took. I feel like once you burnt the stride breaker and you hadn't got close enough and the exhaust came out you were happy with that trade and you should have just walked away you burnt the exhaust that would have been on cooldown for the dragon or at least very close to coming off cooldown and it's that's also a big you... loss that's a very big loss i was literally i'm um, like 40 seconds at the most before that mentioned how luminar is still up in gold but not anymore they are and... down those those three tiebreakers were mentioned, Jake. Like they're they are starting to become a reality. I'm not gonna lie here. Soul Point is up in less than one minute as well here for them. Or not Soul Point, the actual soul. But this game can be very rather scary for them in a Ooh, bit. They hit the chains, they're going in for the fight already, trying to get onto Dark Ride, but the damage is there! The Tivers does the work and Melonic now being chased out is about to open an R out and he's dodges away on Sten for the moment, but no jungler for Illuminar, no chains for Illuminar. And they're not timing out. It's so hard for them to find their opportunity. That pink ward, the control ward, stopping anybody from getting 
potential jump out as Tibbers will lose his life. Nope, pings back to Sebex. And this is really, really rough. You've got the dragon spawning up. Papa Bite will be up fairly soon, but he's not going to be on the map in time. Or at least in the area on time as Melon. It's going to take a lot of damage in response. Chayek just trying to buy a bit of space. Tibbers will be timing out somewhat soon. Sebex still, though, will have his flash available. And Tibbers, a third of his cooldown left. This could just be it. Pabit Abachi is going to have to make a miracle play happen if he's going to be able to get here in time. And I don't think he's going to be able to. That is full. Picked up for the PG Nats. And not only, not only any specific soul, it's the Infernal Soul. Hip rain that gets taken down here. You already have so much burst damage in your kit here. And having those two Infernal Souls on top of that with the soul is going to be so tragic for Illumina to fight into. We've already seen how far they've struggled to take on these fights. And they're only going to be struggling more. Once again, I said it just before, those tiebreakers are starting to become a reality. The hope for the PG Nationals here are staying alive in this game. And as you can see, they've started to trim out the top side of the map. They want to prepare this Baron. You've got the four soul, you got the souls now. Now you just need to gain the pressure on the map, set up the vision, and bait out that fight around the Baron to get that final nail in the coffin in this game. Whoa, Papadabachi almost getting caught out by Sebex. Chayek's gonna have to give this one up. Baron hasn't been taken, but I think you're okay to give up a tier one in the top side right about now. Darkrai will be spotted out by Chayek and Seaboy. So they may look for a little turn here. Odie does have the ultimate. He's going to throw out the Chains of Corruption. He's going to do a fair amount of damage as they get the charge off already. The Railgun's been fired and Chai jumps in onto the back line looking for Durking. Durking flings out. They don't get the Shuriken flip off and Durking's able to survive as they do get response out from Annie. Semek doing a lot of damage to Papadabachi. Papadabachi all alone right now and he is being run down trying to zoom towards safety. Zoom towards his own Rift Herald. But he has just been slowly but surely run down as Papadabachi will go down here. D-Boy hot on his heels, the Blast Cone just to buy a bit of space, just to buy a bit of time for his team to try and answer out as Papa running away. And he actually able to get a bit of speed off here. Momentum building. Seaboy chasing him down though. He's looking for the Sky Splitter, looking for the slow. The, split, the Smite's going to give him a bit of a heal. Chaya just going to watch as his jungler slowly but surely being no run way. down. And Papa Dabachi able to get out. The teleport has been burned. Senex comes in with the sun and he gave him a full ring around the rift, but it wasn't enough. It gave Sebex him the time. kills the jungler, and that could be Baron. It, it could be Baron, but he gave him the time. There's still four members alive now from Illumina when they had so few alive before that. But even then, they struggle so hard in these fights. I don't think they're going to be able to contest this Baron. I think they'll just have to sit and watch while this goes down. But they're looking like they're posturing. They want to try to get in here. This could be it. This is the do or die moment for Illuminar in this game. They've got the Chains of Corruption off cooldown for Odie. He has flashed. He has cleansed. Chayek's coming in on the flank. He's on the control. So he knows he's not been seen yet. As that's it, they're coming in forward. The oh! chains go wide and they jump in. A massive mark. Mages to turn this game around. The final spark is firing off, but Odie's able to find the kill. And this is everything Illuminar needed. Sten in the zombie form, turning her away for the moment. Metal Ning loses his life. Sebek still has health to work with. And Odie just about to get able, uh, get able, get away from it all. Oh my lord. Illuminar cling on to the game. And let's take a look at that once again. You can see Melonic. He's trying to build up the Narbon. Steambuzz here jumps out, finds some beautiful engage onto the back line. This is what your composition was designed to do. And Chajak getting Darkrai as well afterwards is just perfect for you here. You get the three members, but even then, you're still so far behind. That was the perfect team fight for you in a 4v5 scenario. And you come out on top. That was what you needed for Illumina, but. Even with that, you're still going to be struggling in, in these engages. That fight was, as we just said, the perfect fight for you. You're not going to be able to maintain that every time. The backline is not always going to be as easy accessible for you. But Flashes was forced. Sebex, no Flash. Darkrai, no Flash. That is something to play for as well. But the big thing I also noted before that fight was Odie had had both his summoner spells. At the end of that fight, he still has both his summoner spells. But like you said, Sebex has no Flash. So the ability to actually jump on to Odie has gotten a lot harder right now for the side of match goes uh they are just catching ways for the moment the gold lead pretty close it's pretty much dead even at this point although you are getting a bit of a gold lead just off the fact that you have that infernal soul 
which is kind of hidden gold, and now they are setting oh, up no. a death rush. Z-Boy looking for Chipsy. Chipsy, then they jump away. The final spark's been thrown onto him. The Grey Hell's <laughs> popped the Sevex with the Protobelt able to find the kill. The port down, the peel down. Matchco may just look to turn this back into a dragon. The final spark on a very short cooldown for Darkrai. That was the only major summon, only major spell burn. And that's all your warts going down as well. You don't have a blue trinket. There is one from Milonic left, but I don't even know if you want to force down this one. The most problematic thing about this one, if this Baron goes down, and then there's about one minute onto the Elder Drake, it's going to be onto the map, and that's just going to make matters worse. For I do Illumina believe here. If C is looking to buy a QSS, it's his next item from that new Magic Mantle. I think that would make sense. Because he is a target for the CC. The Baron has now been picked up in the meanwhile. Mexico honestly set to force us into these tiebreakers. And set to try and run the Ultra League out of this European Masters. Remember, there is still that magic number as well. If they can finish this before 32 minutes, it's going to be Illumina and Mouse playing that first game. So, if Mochko finishes this in five minutes, they put themselves in some pretty good seeding and they're trying to oh, run down no, Melonic. Melonic is being run down. He's been quite dead. Darkrai finds the kill. Easy as that. I think they've done it. They may have done it here. It's a 4v5 situation still for them here. 30 seconds cooldown. Chayek is on the backside here. A few minute minions to work with here, and it looks like they are going to try and end it here, Jake. Here comes the charge. It's going to land. That's going to do a bunch of damage to the towers. The chains are there. They've cut the towers off already. Only has to flash away from Seaboy. The charge onto the back line. Here comes Chayek. There's only one tower left. They need to make this work. They find the center. They find Seaboy. It's a double kill. It's Chayek. Jumps in. This is the Shuriken flip. Papa Apache trying to jump down onto Darkrai. He's been zoned away by the E for the moment, but he's got himself a long flank. Able to dodge away on the binding. Can't find himself anything else. So they do have the Abyssal Void. They do have the teleports. No. It's do or die for Illuminar here. Can they find their opening? Melanic comes in. The slow from the boomerang is going to connect. The binding is going to go wide. The strike breaker gets burned. And that is going to be all Illuminar can get. But they're going to try and turn this in to the Elder Dragon. Zebex does have teleport. He does have flashes. He wants to try and stop this. And I think they will. See, boy, 10 seconds. The king, five seconds here. But the Elder Drake is going to go down here. This is a reality. And Illumina Gaming, we were about to call that game. But somehow they find another fight. I take the Elder Drake. Going in for a quick reset. They still have to deal with these super means. They only have one Nexus Tower standing. They've got the Elder Drake, and it does give them a small window to take these team fights. But now, OD, no flash, no cleanse. Chip P, actually not building towards the QSS. So gone for the Negatron Cloak as his next item, but does have the flash and the exhaust to himself. This is going to start to get crazy now. Baron Buff will be running out in a few moments. And after that, Elder Drake is still going to be up and available. And that should mean that Illumina, despite them not having a good team, some not too many good team fights so far, with Elder Drake, surely they'll be able to find one of those team fights that will be beneficial for them. Surely they will be able to get in on that back line. But crucially, Sebex does have that flash now. But Durking, no flash himself now, no heal. So he can be a prime target for them to try and dog pile on in their composition. Waves are just getting caught. Illumina waiting in the wings. Two minutes, well, three minutes realistically, until that Rift Herald, uh, sorry, the, the big Rift Herald, I've always known as the Baron Nasher, <laughs> is going to be up and available. And it looks like they are just kind of Rushing through the mid for the side of Illumina. Got three items now finished up. On to the Varus. Is having a bad G, charging up the E. Not going to be able to find it. There's a big wave crashing in on the bottom side of the map. But someone on Illumina probably wants to go deal with, as though most of that has now timed out or died out. And that's just insane wave clear from the side of Mochko there. The locks E together with the ultimate was all you needed. Then Buster took care of the cannon. So even though you have this Elder Drake right now, if you're not able to force a fight, if they can keep clearing these minions, Mochko, they, all they need to do here is just stall out the Elder Drake. That's the only win condition. Illumina Gaming, they just want to make the most out of this right now. They want to take the game back in their hands. And Darkrai is about to get Final Spark back up. 
though, the wave clear is very much there. Tabard of Bunchy comes over the wall with the charge of the multiple members, instantly stunned up, tries to buy himself a bit of space, then takes so much damage oh, that they find no. themselves to kill onto Tabard of And now Mushko are looking for this fight, they're looking for this turnaround. Belenix gonna get a shield off his chart, he's trying to come in onto the flank. The Elder Dragon still ticking away on the side of Illuminar. Sten gonna heal back up on that fountain and get back onto the map. But you can also tell the Illumina, they got so desperate. They knew exactly what I was talking about. They knew they needed to make something out of that Elder Drake. It's run out now. Elder Drake is out of the way. Pops Bachi is still up in 20 seconds. But even then, what do you do now? You've had so many issues taking these team fights. At this point in the game, surely they won't be able to find another one. Surely this should be Muchko finally finishing it out. Still with the Infernal Soul, with Baron up in one minute. I'm finding... It's hard to find ways for Illumina to come back keep, in this one. Keep your eyes on Odi. He's about to get the flash. He's got the cleanse. He's got a Guardian Angel, Chayek, level 16 on the Akali with Death Clap and the uh, Rift Maker. They do have tools. They do have opportunities. Like you said, though, it is hard. The gold lead is close and an Infernal Soul sits on Machiko. So the, stat, the odds are stacked against them. But there are these little opportunities, these little moments as Melanick is not out and Jaik is coming in. A bit of a pincer maneuver coming in from the Illuminar guys. But they're not able to find their punish quite yet. Now it looks like they've got the inside track on the mid lane. A Seaboy trying to fret in onto Melanick who will time out on his Meganar. See, no one is willing to go out in any side lane. There is TP available if you want to try and pressure it, but no one wants to make that mistake. Everyone wants to stay as a cohesive unit here and be ready for that final team fight, which should be just around the corner. Baron is spawning in 10 seconds, and once again, Jakey said it. Odi with summoner spells, with four items and a guardian angel. He's going to be the backline damage from Illumina while they try to take care of the backline themselves with their dog wild. Has just hit, hit level 16 on Akali as well, so the ultimate does not get stronger than now. You got the puddle from Senna making it really hard to see who's who. Chayek trying to find a flank. The chains of corruption go wide. There's the Nar. Can he get it off in time? The charge is there. So much has been used. Railgun and the laser beams are just getting fired off. It's only completely untouched, but he's barely cracking the health bars. It's a one for one so far. Chayek trying to jump away. It's a double kill being already picked up on Sten as he's looking for Chayek. Chayek is caught that way, everyone. And they find themselves four members of Illuminar. We're going to tiebreakers. There's nothing that Illuminar can do about this one. Yeah, huge wave in the top side. You can see Odie, he's trying to stop them from getting any mid waves right now. But wait, wait, they're not trying to end it here? Are they trying to just run it down with that single turret? I think they're just going to ignore the minion waves and just say, we can take this turret. We're four people. There's nothing that should stop us here. And Odie, he's recalling now 15 seconds onto Melonic, but I think it's too late for them. He just doesn't have what it takes. He's going to get resurrected from the GA. His team are coming up fairly shortly. He flashes away from Seaboy. Does a fair amount of damage. Is this power is a little bit oh, low. No. Seaboy almost low. Can they do it? They've seen Goblins and not. The Nexus is exposed. The rest of the team are coming in. Can they hold on? They find themselves one. They are trying to get a number one Seaboy. Bops into the fountain. The laser beam's not doing enough damage. They don't have Odie. They don't have the sustained damage. The Nexus has hey. stopped away. Oh my god. Oh god, they do it. Stan, come you. Oh, the game is God. over! We got a tiebreakers! Holy! Holy word, I can't say on broadcast! <laughs> Jesus Christ, Illumina! That game had no business being that close, by the way. <laughs> no business whatsoever. That team come should have been so hard to pull off for Illumina, and somehow there. Oh my I, god, it comes so close. Gobble, Gobble, Gobble's I just died. Out. I I, I, know, I just disappeared. I don't know if you can see it here on broadcast, so I'm just going to talk until we figure out what's going on. But what this means is we now do have confirmed tiebreakers. So, uh, Mashko did get themselves a... Uh, they got to choose what side they're on, but they didn't win the game in time to get uh, a, one less game. So they do have to play versus Illuminar again coming up after the break. And then the winner of that will be playing in our second tiebreaker, which is going to be Mouse. So we've got two more games coming up on the broadcast. And I need to rest my voice because it's going to be an absolute doozy. Coming up after the break, our first tiebreaker, which will be Matchco versus Illuminar once again. Can Matchco make the magic happen? Can the PG Nats get two teams into the playoffs? We'll find out after the break. See you in a moment.